hello, 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 and how is everyone? It is Ama, and I am back with another video. And today, I really want to talk about something, you know, that I've been experiencing with my clients, and it's something that I want to share with the rest of you. And so today's video is titled, Three Biggest Mind Tricks That the Narcissist Plays With You. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the three biggest mind tricks that the narcissist does to really kind of get into your head, throw you off balance, off kilter, and really feed into the toxic cycle of the relationship. So come along with me on this journey of healing and let's talk about this together. <music> Okay, so I just want to say really, really quickly that I am able to uh, take on new clients. Before, uh, things were very busy and I had kind of a full load. And so now I am able to take on a few more new clients. And so if you are interested in coaching, um, you can feel free to email me at ama at progressthroughprocess.com. And um, you can inquire there um, and I can send you some information, okay? All right, so today I want to really discuss three biggest mind tricks that the narcissist plays. And I will start off by saying first, um, these mind tricks really are able to work because it's part of the strategy of the narcissist okay it's really so much of the things that the narcissist does you may say oh my gosh are they aware of it do they know that they're doing this do they, they know they know they may not know specifically why they do it right because it is a personality disorder there are people who have narcissistic traits and there are people who have full-blown npd narcissistic personality disorder um so for people you know they fall on that spectrum where they will just have traits and then others are just full-blown narcissists. And um, they may not necessarily know why they do it, um, but they certainly know what they're doing when they do it, okay? And so I'm going to jump right in and start to talk about <clears throat> the three biggest tricks. The first biggest mind trick that the narcissist will play on you is basically a role reversal okay this is where i talk about almost like being a magician with the sleight of hand right when you when you're engaged with a magician the magician distracts you so that they can kind of right do their 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 work their magic without you being aware of it and it is no different with a narcissist a narcissist uses the same strategy and tactic of distraction right? To get you all in love and thinking that they're the greatest thing and right. They distract you with the emotional. It's an emotional distraction so that they can wreak havoc in your life. And so the way that this shows up usually is it's a role reversal. The narcissist will make you feel like you don't measure up and that you haven't accomplished anything. And you will begin to believe this. But the reason that I say it's a, it's a mind trick is because when you step out of the fog of abuse and you actually line up your accomplishments versus the narcissist's accomplishments, you will see that you have accomplished far more than the narcissist has ever accomplished. Oftentimes, narcissists start things that they never finish right? They may jump from one um, endeavor to the next, right? Biz money making endeavor or business or something. Um, and they just leave a trail of unfinished business in their path. And so when they meet you and they're attracted to you, because remember the narcissist is attracted to the things that they want that they don't have. So they see your accomplishments, they see your connections, they see your drive and your passion for the things that you have done, and they want that. And so they latch on to you. But as the relationship begins to develop, they actually switch up on you, and it seems as though you haven't accomplished anything, 
and they've accomplished everything just in the way that they talk to you, right? They, 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 they use language and terminology that almost makes you seem like an underachiever, like you haven't done enough with your life. And they are so sanctimonious and self-righteous that they've done everything, even though anyone dealing with a narcissist knows that it's a con job. They haven't done anything. And I'll give you a really quick example. I don't think I ever told you guys the story about how the narcissist almost killed me. Okay. And I'll give a disclaimer. It wasn't an actual type murder, but how the narcissist almost killed me. And this is how I knew the narcissist is a con man. So I told you before that my narcissist was this health and wellness fitness person, right? And he does all these herbs. He sells herbs on his website and all this other stuff. So I had gone to the gynecologist for my yearly checkup and the doctor had found a tiny fibroid on the outside of my uterus. I know too much information, but I've got, it, it, it ties into the story, so I have to tell you. So they found a tiny little fibroid on the outside of my uh, uterus, right? And so when I came home, I know that some women in my family suffer from fibroids. I don't want them. And so I was just like, you know what? I have to find a way to change my diet and try to get rid of this because I don't want it to grow. I don't want to end up having to have surgery, blah, blah, blah. So I told him, I made the mistake of telling him, and he was like, oh, fibroids, those balls of inflammation, we're going to get rid of, we're going to eradicate it out of your body. I'm going to put you on a special regimen, a special diet, food and herbs, and in six months, watch, it's going to be gone. Okay, mind you, he's never been to school for this. He's never taken a course for homeopathic healing. He has never probably even read a book on it. But he's developed this whole business in this Facebook persona that he is the man to see. And he can cure you with these herbs. So me being in the fog, I go along with it. We order all these herbs and he gives me the rundown. He gives me how to take it, what I'm supposed to do to take it. So I take the herbs, gulp down the water, take the other set of herbs, gulp down the water, all of this other stuff, right? This is in the morning. I'm about to take my kids to school. And literally within about seven minutes or less, I would, I would vent, I would say, maybe within five minutes of taking it, my stomach started to flip-flop. It started to turn. And about 10 more minutes in, I started to like break out in cold sweats. Um, and I could tell that I was going to throw up. Now, anybody that knows me will tell, I, like, I don't throw up. I don't. It's very rare for me to throw up. Um, unless when I was younger, if I had a hangover or something, but I generally don't tend to throw up. So I knew what was coming. My stomach just started to clench up and I knew it. I knew that I had to take my kids to school though. So I jump in the car with them and I got maybe about five minutes away from my house and I had to pull over. I had to pull over and call him to come and get me off the side of the road because I was in my car with my kids in the back. I got dizzy. Um, I felt like I was going to pass out. I had to open up the car door. I was just throwing up and throwing up and throwing up and throwing up. And I was afraid to drive in that condition with my children. And so when he came to get me and he's just like, oh, what happened? And I explained it to him. He was like, oh, the herbs did that to you? That's strange because, but the way he was talking about it, I could tell this man had no clue how those herbs were supposed to be used. I could also tell that he had no, he had never prescribed this regimen to anyone before. He was pulling this out of his, his behind as he went along. And I was basically a guinea pig. So I always say, you know, the narcissist will look at all your accomplishments and try to be somebody that they're not, right? They have no credentials. They've never gotten any kind of certification in it, 
but they make themselves the experts on things that they know nothing about. And that can be very dangerous. It just like in my situation, that what that could have landed me in the hospital. I could have needed to have my stomach pumped, right? Because I was just trusting this person and I got violently sick. So that's one way that they um that's one mind trick that they use on you to make them seem like they're the accomplished ones and you just haven't done anything in your life. Or the things that you have done and accomplished in your life just weren't worthy enough of of you know admiration or 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 to be noticed right they want to make it seem like you know your your light is dim and their light is bright and when you really step out of the fog of the abuse you can sit back and be like you tricked me you really tricked me because you don't have anything going on in your life right? But you have to be out of the fog to see that. Second biggest trick, and this is so important, especially if you are like myself, someone who works with narcissists or for narcissists. The second biggest mind trick of the narcissist is they need you to lose control so they can gain control. I will say that again. They need you to lose control so that they can gain control. We know something about narcissists. At their core, they want to control you, control your emotions, control the way that you think, right? They want to manipulate those things. And when the narcissist realizes that they're losing their grip or their control on how you think and or behave, then they start to actually lash out. They ramp up their abuse, right? They do things that are just just horrible. Like they will pick and pick and pick at you in a fight. So for example, because I was married for so long, I just have gotten used to arguing in a certain way, my ex-husband and I, right? The screaming at the top of the lungs, throwing things, all that. Other it just, it doesn't happen. My ex-husband and I, we would disagree about something and we would sit down and we would talk about it. And I'm not trying to act like we were angels. We weren't, but that we just had kind of like ground rules where it was like, you don't cross this line. You don't say this thing. You don't do this certain thing. Right. And so sometimes it, sometimes it worked. (laughs) Sometimes it didn't. But when I got into a relationship with him, it was just like, you're not going to rope me into an argument where I'm screaming and cursing. And the narcissist always wanted me to curse. He always wanted me to curse and he'd be like, oh, you try to act like you're so perfect. Why you try to act like you're so perfect? And I would tell him, I'm like, you know, I just, I'm not saying that I don't curse, but it's not necessary. Like I I don't have a limited vocabulary. I can express myself without cursing you out. It's just not necessary for me to do, but he probably wanted a big explosive fight so that he can use it as justification to give me the silent treatment and go on and source out. A new supply for himself. But the narcissist will love to get you emotionally roped into an altercation because the more you say, well, you know, that's, it's, that's okay. I like, I'm not really going to argue with you like that. And I'm not, and I'm not, and you keep doing that. They will pull out the, the, the bombs on you, right? They'll pull out things from your childhood. They'll pull out things that your friends did to you or something and make you feel right? Because they want you to lose control. Because the minute you lose control, watch the narcissist sit back and watch you just like a a, a soap opera. They watch you just like a television program. And then they get haughty and then they get condescending and they get noticeably quiet because now you're acting out. You've lost control. And this is when they snatch control back of the argument, snatch control back of the situation. As you spiral out of control, they then maintain control and they look at you like you're crazy. And by the end of it, I guarantee you, you are apologizing to the narcissist. Mind trick. Again, just like the magician distract you, right? So that they can work their magic and do their tricks. That's exactly what they do. So that's the second one. They need for you to lose control so that they can gain control. And then lastly, the narcissist keeps you feeling insecure. The narcissist keeps you feeling insecure. Biggest and I would say most effective mind trick of the three. 
they keep you feeling insecure and they do this in two ways. The first way is they make you feel insecure about yourself. So if you notice when you first started dating the narcissist and they were love bombing you, they would always tell you how beautiful you are. Oh, you look great in that dress. Oh my gosh. I love when you cook this particular meal. You're so great. You're a, you're a wonderful, whatever your profession is. You're a great attorney. You're a great teacher. You're a great therapist. You're a great, right? You're, and they're just praising you and praising you. And then they stop praising you and they start criticizing you. And the praise that they used to give is so few and far in between that you start to think there's something wrong with you. What's wrong with me? What, what, right? And you start to work harder, right? This is how they get you on to the hamster's wheel. And then you're working harder and harder trying to please them because the compliments have stopped, right? The things that they loved about you, they're no, no longer talking about them loving it about you. Now they, they criticize you about it. And, and so you, you feel like, oh my God, like I must have changed. I've done something wrong. I'm a different person. Let me try to get back to where we used to be. Let me try to get back to who I used to be in the beginning of the relationship. So he'll love me again or she'll love me again. And so that gets you on that cycle. But they always want to keep you feeling insecure so that you, 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 you're off balance. Because once you're off balance, you're looking for validation. You're looking for approval. You're looking for love. And they know that. So they got you in their, in their, in their um, trap. And then the second way that they keep you insecure is they keep you insecure about the relationship. Right? They keep you insecure about the relationship. Most people will tell you when they're dating a narcissist, they don't know if they're in a relationship or not. Are we, are we still together? We, we had a blow up fight. He said he doesn't think, or she said we shouldn't be together. They've left, but now they come back and he's laying in my bed. She's cooking me dinner. It's confusing. You don't know where you are. You don't know what your relationship status is from day to day. This is also deliberate and it's meant to keep you off kilter so that why? You keep trying and you try harder and you try harder. And once the narcissist sees you do that, again, that's a form of you losing control. Going back to number two, they need you to lose control so they can gain control. So now you've lost control about where your relationship is. You don't have a point of reference. You're just like, are we seeing each other? Are we exclusive? Are we seeing other people? You don't know. You, you're unsure. And it's meant to keep you unsure so that you never feel good enough about yourself to stand up for yourself in the relationship and to talk back to the narcissist when they do something wrong and to really assert yourself and, sh and put up boundaries and show self-love because you're always unsure. You're just like, well, if I say this one thing, we're already teetering on the edge. They might break up with me or they may not want to be with me anymore, or maybe I don't even have the right to say this to him or her. I don't have the right to question them about who's calling them because are we exclusive or aren't we exclusive? I, I don't know. It, do I have the right to question why they're coming home at this time or, or who was that in their car? Are we together? Are we not? You know, she said that we, they keep you confused and it's all part of the tactic. So I'm going to end right here and I'm going to ask you to do three things like if you like this video hit the like button so more people can see it if it resonated with you um, share share this video if you feel like it can help someone I'm all for that sharing the video um, hit subscribe I'm sorry I'm losing it this morning hit the subscribe button to subscribe to the channel um, to stay up with what I'm doing. You can also hit the bell to, to keep up with what I'm doing. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Subscribe, like, comment below. Please comment below. I love the comments. And again, it is Ama, and I want to tell you thank you so much for taking this walk with me on this journey of healing. And until next time, take care. <laughs>